I respect this court, but I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son, Paul Paul. Well, it, and it might not have been you. It, it might have been uh, the monster you become when you take 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 opioid pills. Maybe you become another person. In the murder of your wife, Maggie Murdoch, I sentence you for the term of the rest of your natural life for the murder of Paul Murdoch, whom you probably loved so much. I sentence you to prison for murdering him for the rest of your natural life. <laughs> The court cannot underscore defendant's extensive planning and execution in this case enough. He practiced shooting at a gun range. He practiced racking and unracking the gun. And on November 30th, 2021, he could have chose not to conduct the school shooting. When his parents were called to the school on that morning for his drawings, he could have said something then. He had a gun in his backpack at that time. When the school counselor advised the parents to please get him help within the next 48 hours, he could have stopped then and simply accepted the help that was going to be offered for him. Because according to the reports, his mother said that he, she'd get him the help. He could have changed his mind. Unfortunately, after shooting the first person, Phoebe Arthur, he could have changed his mind at that point, but he didn't. He continued to walk through the school, picking and choosing who was going to die. As the defendant said in his own words, this is nobody's fault but his own. He stated this afternoon that with help, that probably would not have stopped him. That is absolutely concerning to this court. The court apologized to the victim for the bluntness, but the defendant shot and killed Justin Schilling at point blank range after having him get down on his knees in front of another student. He shot Hannah, who was already shot once before. He walked up to her to finish the job by shooting her again. That is an execution. That is torture. He shot most people multiple times. And as he wrote, he did this for notoriety. And he wanted to go down in history as the biggest school shooter in Michigan history. The court cannot ignore the deep trauma defendant caused to the state of Michigan, but in particular, the Oxford community. The court simply cannot ignore that. Unfortunately, this is what the defendant wanted as he wrote in his journal. He wanted to see the impact of his crime, which is why he did not take his own life. Again, this goes back to the defendant's extensive planning. He chose not to die on that day because he wanted the notoriety. The terror that he caused in the state of Michigan and in Oxford is a true act of terrorism. Respectfully, defendant is the rare juvenile before this court. The court having read the PSI and being fully familiar, but before I get that, I will also note that counsel brought up an issue of making bombs for Hitler. The court, that does not change the court's opinion about the defendant's obsession with violence. I thank Ms. Hopp for bringing that to my attention, but it still does not change the court's opinion about him being obsessed with violence because his obsession was also outlined in the websites that he visited. His obsession was also outlined in his extensive drawings of violence. And his obsession continued, as I noted in the court's opinion and order, even while he was in the Oakland County Jail. With that, the court having read the PSI and being fully familiar with the defendant and the underlying facts of this case, believes that it is in the best interest of justice as well as proportionate to the needs of this case to sentence defendant as follows. As it relates to Docket 2022, 279506 FC count one terrorism causing death. Census of the court is that defendant shall serve life without the possibility of parole, credit for eight days served. Counts two through five homicide, first degree, premeditated murder, juvenile defendant. Census of the court is that defendant shall serve the rest of his life without the possibility of parole with the Michigan Department of Corrections, credit for eight days served. On count six through 12, assault with intent to murder. On each of the counts, defendant is sentenced to 18 years and nine months to 80 years with the Michigan Department of Corrections, credit for eight days served. On counts 13 through 24, those being felony firearm, 
defendant is sentenced to two years with the Michigan Department of Corrections on each of those counts with credit for 730 days served. Counts one through 12 are concurrent to each other and counts 13 through 24 are concurrent to each other. Count one is consecutive to count 13. Count two is consecutive to count 14. Count three is consecutive to count 15. Count four is consecutive to count 16. Count five is consecutive to count 17. Count six is consecutive to count 18. Count seven is consecutive to count 19. Count eight is consecutive to count 20. Count nine is consecutive to count 21. Count 10 is consecutive to count 22. Count 11 is consecutive to 23. And count 12 is consecutive to count 24. All of those consecutive counts are by reason of the felony firearm statute. Is there a challenge to restitution here? There is not, Your Honor. Thank you. Restitution will be set in the amount of $20,781. State costs will be set in the amount of $1,632. <laughs>